Hey guys, you're here bringing you guys another video. So today Pier 3 was released. Um, it was announced uh, about a week ago or something. So all the ships are available on EN. We got it at the same time as CN and JP, which caused a bit of a controversy. People were saying that uh, we didn't have enough time with Pier 2 in order to catch up. So a lot of players are having complete Pier 2 ships and stuff like that. But anyway, either way, we have Pier 3. So I'm gonna be going over just uh, some of the details. I'm just gonna an overview of each ship. We're gonna go through them together. And then I'm gonna talk about um, just, is there any differences between Pier 2, Pier one and now pr3 so the first ship here is uh, called champagne uh, she's a french ship and uh, she requires uh, combat experience from eagle union uh, vicky dominion or iris libra main fleet ship so again just like pr2 it's not a uh, hull type uh, classified so it's just uh, either main fleet or vanguard ships not nothing like pr1 in fact actually um, there was a change to pr1 now pr1 combat experience is main fleet or vanguard as well similar to pr2 and pr3 so that's nice if you have still Still missing pr1 ships from combat data collection um so that's champagne um she has her skills here so decreasing the loading time of the ship's main guns by 40 percent which is good uh, and fires an additional level 10 barrage along with its primary salvo so every time she shoots she'll also shoot a level 10 barrage and then also decrease the loading time of the main guns by 40 percent so she's gonna be shooting often and she'll be shooting a barrage um every 20 seconds fires a level 10 barrage so on top of that every 20 seconds <laughs> she's firing a level 10 barrage and i think i believe the special thing about champagne is that she doesn't have any increase in main gun so she's only shooting one salvo every time she shoots however it comes with a barrage and then on top of that every 20 seconds she comes with a barrage so in terms of um damage output um she's looking pretty good even though she's not going to have any main gun mount plus ones into their limb breaks i think she will also be very good synergy with richelieu because richelieu will buff uh at french ships so richelieu and her will probably be really really good for top tier content uh in the future so i think for a boss killer um i think champagne and richelieu are looking as a para looking really good we take our yellow uh her yellow skill here when this ship uses a main gun that fires he ammo increases its firepower aa and increases the damage modifier against enemies with heavy armor so again bosses more generally uh especially like in 13-4 when using one that fires ap increases this ship's firepower reload and increases its crit rate by 20 percent well this ship is above 75 this is a long skill this is like a Yu-Gi-Oh card well this ship is above 75 percent hp absorbs 50 percent of the damage your flagship takes when it's below 75 percent increases the ship's evasion and accuracy by 15 percent so an accuracy buff is really good for a flagship for uh, for a battleship. So she's going to be doing a lot of damage. She's a battleship. Um, I didn't mention that earlier. So she's going to be doing quite a bit of damage. She's going to be shooting fairly quickly with a level 10 barrage. Every 20 seconds on top of that, she has a level 10 barrage. And then she's also going to be increasing her accuracy and evasion. So she's going to be fairly tanky and also buffing her firepower and AA on top of that. She's going to be really good. So Champagne's looking pretty solid. Um, I think early tier lists have her at tier 0 to 0 0.5. Um, I think Richelieu makes her really, really good. So you want probably want to use her with Richelieu. So I'm actually picking her first. I'm actually a Champagne gang here. I actually ended up picking Champagne as my first PR3 ship. Well, let's take a look at Champagne's uh, skill simulation so we can take a look and see what that barrage looks like together. Uh, so I just put it pulling out. So Champagne out in the back. Um, so this is her shot right here. So that's the one shot again. She doesn't get anything, but that's a pretty decent looking barrage. So not bad. Um, and again, it's gonna be fairly quickly. She's shooting already. Holy crap. That is a quick reload. Oh my God. This reload is super fast. Look at this reload going. Boom. And we haven't even reached a 20 second mark. For, for her other 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 barrage oh my god this reload is insane so this, she's gonna be shooting like we mentioned she's gonna be shooting quickly and she's gonna be shooting hard damn and now here's the special barrage um okay so that special barrage was really just like an extra salvo really but damn this is looking really good i'm really liking that i really like the rapid fire like a rapid fire battleship that's really awesome so that's champagne's barrage looking really strong next we have Sh cheshire so cheshire is a I'm, I'm really mispronouncing this i'm sure she is a hms ship a heavy cruiser if we take a look uh, she decreases the damage uh taken by 15 percent, which is good uh this is a level one or it's a level 10 actually so by damage taken by 15 percent, which is good for heavy cruiser um every 12 seconds at the start of the battle 100 chance to fire a special barrage so every 12 seconds she fires a barrage uh, which is, looks pretty strong um decreases the loading time of this ship's first wave of torpedoes by 70% when the ship takes damage 15% chance to increase the ship's uh, firepower evasion and AA by 5% until the end of the battle so that's really good can stack up so we can take a look at these uh skill simulations actually so we can take a look at the uh oh we can just go in so let's look at the barrage so there it is wow the barrage is coming from the sky it's actually pretty cool and there's a little little cat paws coming down so that's pretty cool so that's uh that's cheshire okay now going into drake uh, so drake is an hms uh, heavy cruiser as well uh, so both uh cheshire and drake are hms heavy cruisers uh, drake's here uh her first red skill increases the ship's built-in secondary gun crit rate by 50 percent. so that's not too bad he has a level 10 percent level 10 ammo buff to it so that's giving me kind of like london kai vibes uh, with uh its secondary gun being really strong uh when the ship uses a main gun that fires normal or he ammo the 
shapes main gun ammo type changes to special HE, so that's interesting. And then her yellow skill every 20 seconds fires a special barrage that heals the ship for 15% of the damage dealt, so that's pretty good. So self, self heals pretty nice. Uh, when the ship uh, sinks, an enemy increases this ship's firepower and reload by 5% until the end of the battle. So it's kind of similar, stacks up to three times, similar to Cheshire. And then a Siren Killer, of course. So let's take a look at the simulation here. I'm just very curious to see what the uh, what the what the barrage looks like and what the what the healing skill looks like as well. Be nice to see that in action. So um, so there's Drake here. Just want to take a look at her barrage. Um, I think it's a uh, 20 seconds. Was it? I forgot. Okay, it's not. I don't see it. Maybe the I think it's a flintlock thing actually. So I think that's that's what that was. Anyway, so yeah, there's Drake. I'm um, just not taking a whole lot of damage here, so it's hard to see which how much she can heal for. Um, she's not taking a lot of damage. That's her all assault, which actually looks really cool. She is something that I noticed from a CA is that she's firing backwards, which is fairly rare for a CA. Generally, the firing angles for CA guns are fairly bad. So being able to fire backwards as a CA is pretty new. So that's Drake. Uh, so something else to mention about Drake is that she is the only DR ship for PR3. So uh, Drake is the one and only DR ship available for PR3. Mains is a KMS light cruiser. Um, so again, we're going to be going back to using a, you know, good old uh, Colnesburg Colne retrofit and stuff like that in order to get the experience needed for mains. Take a look at her skill structure. She's a blue, uh, I'm thinking of first blue skill we see is really retaliatory shield every 15 seconds deploys a shield in front of the ship that lasts eight seconds and can block up to six enemy shells if this shield is destroyed within the allotted time fires a barrage and increases the ship's firepower and accuracy by eight percent until the end of the battle that's pretty decent it's not too bad deploys a shield in front of the ship so very really tanky um kind of similar to rune rune has also has a shield and then her red skill uh Aus Ausko Wagen, Ausko Wagen. At the start of the battle, if the ship is in your frontmost position of your vanguard, increases the ship's speed and invasion, a speed by five and invasion by 12% until the end of the battle, and decreases its damage taken by 15% for 30 seconds. If not in the frontmost position, increases the ship's crit damage by 25 and 15 seconds has a 70% chance to fire a special barrage. So that's kind of nice because she has kind of a dual, kind of dual role that she can do. She, she's just at the frontmost. She can be a tank. She's fairly good. She can increase her evasion. And, and notice that it's evasion and not evasion rate. So evasion by 12% is not as good as evasion rate um evasion rate increases as is in ships like noshiro and ping hai and yet sen um which is make them very tanky um evasion uh, has diminishing returns but she's a light cruiser so she's probably not at the point where the evasion increase is terrible so that's not too bad and then she decreases uh, damage taken for 30 seconds so um she can be fairly tanky or she can also do more damage with the crit damage increase and uh and the special barrage and then we have siren killer here so we'll take a look at the simulation here and uh see what that looks like uh with the barrage so i think she's considered the frontmost position in this case when she's in solo so she probably she has the um the evasion uh and speed increase that's what uh that's what she looks like she has that shield kind of again very similar to runes like the same kind as rune has but um that's really cool so that's mans again the light cruiser kms and then lastly we have odin odin is the kms battle cruiser so i think it's the first pr battle cruiser that we get so we'll take a look at uh, odin's skills on uh, mimir's keen eyes so it changes the ship's position okay and decreases its damage taken by 20 percent. what do you mean it changes the ship's position okay it's damage decreases damage taken by 20 percent. already strong every 15 seconds commences a sonar scan revealing the location of all enemy submarines for 10 seconds and decreasing your vanguard's damage taken from torpedoes by 15 okay so it's a bit of an anti-submarine warfare first skill they're very interesting in q Curious to see if we're going to get any more sub content in the future. Uh, every 18 seconds, I have a chance of to fire a special barrage. Uh, changes the spread angle of the ship's torpedoes. Okay, very interesting. So very curious to see what that looks like. And then Siren Killer there. So let's take a look at the simulation here. So again, it's Odin's a battle cruiser, not a battleship. <clears throat> so there's some small changes, probably medium armor, stuff like that compared to a full battleship. So let's take a look to see what her barrage looks like. See if we can get it to fire. Every 18 seconds, I believe is what it said. So there goes her first uh, salvo. Okay. Okay. So she has pretty, pretty standard looking salvo. So she shoots torpedoes as well, similar to Tirpitz. And uh, every 18 seconds hopefully we get to see the barrage here um okay we do see it oh wow that barrage is cool okay it's very quick kind of like blitzkrieg reminds me of like lightning so german blitzkrieg kind of deal very cool very cool barrage that uh submarine skill maybe not right now the most useful but perhaps in the future once we potentially get more submarine content that'll become more more useful in the future but yeah so those are all five of the new pr3 ships so four pr ships one dr ship again drake is a dr decisive rarity if you guys want to know what the difference is between a pr and a dr you guys can watch my pr2 video um i can link that in the description box down below i've got a pr2 video um, that i just put out recently actually now we have pr3 so um, a bit quicker on the take with the pr3 video uh so again i think for my choice is going to be champagne that's kind of what i'm going to go for first pr3 ships also have a fleet tech requirement um so here uh Cheshire requires 700 royal navy 800 120 Royal Navy for Drake, 550 Iron Blood for Men's, and uh, 600 for Odin. And I think Champagne required uh, Royal Navy and Eagle Union fleet tech. I forgot how much exact. 700.
160 Eagle Union and 700 Royal Navy uh, Fleet Tech. Anyway, keep working on your Fleet Tech. If you guys can't quite work uh, on the PR3 ships yet, keep working on your Fleet Tech. Work on PR1 and PR2, and then you'll eventually get to the point where you'll be able to work on these. Um, my pick, I think, out of the, all of these, I like Champagne the most. I really like her rapid fire ability. Like 40% reload time is like a uh, cooldown. And then on top of that, a uh, barrage every single time she shoots. And on top of that, a time barrage. I think she's going to be really good. And I think it's already been tested that her theoretical damage, I think, is even higher than FDG's, Friedrich der Grosse, which was, uh, she used to be the damage leader, theoretical damage leader, FDG. Um, and I think uh, Champagne actually breaks that. So uh, Champagne, I think, is a really high potential to be really, really good, especially with Richelieu, because Richelieu has a buff for French ships. Um, I haven't finished her skill here yet, but when Sortie is a flagship, increases the firepower, torp, accuracy, and reload of your Iris Libra and uh, Vichia Dominion ships um, and also increases damage dealt by your ships by 5% and it decreases the damage taken by 5%. So really, really good synergy, obviously, with French ships, with sh with champ which Champagne is. So uh, my pick was going to be Champagne uh, for this one as my favorite and I think possibly the top performer. Everybody else is still really good. I mean, these are just priority ships. They're they're always going to research ships are always good. Um, I don't think there's a bad research ship. So um, if you guys don't know who to pick, just pick your favorite. Um, Champagne was also happened to be my favorite um, before we learned what they did. So um, I pick Champagne. A lot of people like Cheshire. Cheshire is really cute. Um, has like, you know, the whole mate thing going on that people like and she's a cat. So what's not to like? Drake is a first DR ship. Some people are going for her because she's the first DR and they want to start on her early. Men's um, CL, a KMS and Odin a KMS as well. Battle cruiser, of course. So pick your favorite um they're all really good so yeah really cool addition for en perhaps a little premature but pr3 coming out strong uh lastly there was one more thing that yostar added to the game and that's uh these combat data packs um so we if you, anybody else noticed you guys have this easy tab now again on the top for those that had already finished it such as myself you have pr1 here and now you get um you get these challenges here that give you these combat data packs um so a data pack developed by the research division can be used to supplement 10,000 experience for the combat data collection uh, missions for PR1 ships. So if you haven't finished developing your PR1 ship, so if you go take a look at the PR1, I actually haven't finished the Zumo myself. So I still I still have to finish the Zumo. I'm at the, the combat data collection. But um, what uh, Yostar did was that they added these data packs so instead of having to, you know, what takes the longest time is, getting, you know, getting the experience and stuff. They want people to be able to finish PR1 so they can start working on PR2 and PR3 because that's the, the newest ships, obviously. So they introduced these data packs so you can just use one. It counts as 10,000 experience towards the combat data collection. Um, you have to be developing the ship, but so that's why I can't use mine right now. But um, yeah, so you can, you can get these packs. Each one counts as 10,000 experience and then you can just hand them into there. It counts as 10,000 experience. So you don't have to do the three mil experience for each PR1 ship. There's enough here for probably two or maybe even three ships, um, probably two, two or three, uh, like the full three mil for PR1. So if you guys are struggling to finish your PR1 ships, um, especially for the frontline ships, which takes a little longer because there's no flagship bonus. So Neptune, Ibuki, Rune, and St. Louis, um, I would especially recommend you guys use them on those ships. If you guys wanna use those combat new combat data packs, uh, feel free to use them. Preferably, uh, probably it's best for the frontliners, but if you're struggling to get a backliner as well, um, that would be not a bad idea either. In addition to PR3, uh, Yostar introduced uh, PR2 Fate Simulation. So similar to PR1, uh, where at the end of getting a, dev, a ship to dev level 30, you'd be able to access fate simulation here which would increase the luck of the ship after a certain amount of blueprints and then give you a nice uh, skill boost at the end they've also introduced that for pr2 now so uh, if you have any extra blueprints for pr2 ships if you didn't exchange them into proto cores like i did at the prototype shop then you can increase uh, their fate simulation for pr2 ships and you're able to get uh, that luck boost and the skill boost at the end there as well unfortunately i actually exchanged the majority of my seattle and kitakaze blueprints into the prototype uh, shop here here and I exchanged them for prototype cores. Uh, I'm going to stop doing that and I'm probably going to work on Fate Sim. But uh, yeah, so this is a new option that you have now. If you don't want to do the Fate Sim for PR2 for whatever reason, you're also capable of just uh, putting them into the prototype uh, shop still. Um, you don't have to keep them and do sim fate simulation. But yeah, that's something new that was also introduced uh, with the PR3 update. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the new PR3 ships. And um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you guys like my content, feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. Um, I also stream on Twitch. I stream Agile Lane a couple times a week at twitch.tv slash one if you guys want to check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.